Hello everyone. I'm Raziman from Indian University of Technology. I hope I find you all in good health. I was looking forward to meet you in person, but I'm glad that we can have this presentation over the SPI Digital Forum. I would like to talk today about a work on the parallel near fields of nanophotonic structures. The interaction of circularly polarized light with matter gives rise to many interesting phenomena with practical applications. Chiral molecules which are distinct from their mirror images can rotate the polarization of light known as optical activity or absorb left and right polarized light differently in circular dichroism. Light also contains angular momentum which it can impart to particles as an optical torque. It is also possible to excite up or down spins in material selectively giving rise to optical magnetism. Finally, atomically thin semiconductors such as transition metal dichalcogenides can absorb left and right polarized positions to separate valleys of their band structure and produce circularly polarized photoluminescence. But unfortunately, many of these chiroptical interactions are very weak, making the practical applications difficult. So we asked the question can we use nanophotonics to enhance chirality to strengthen these effects over the years many nanophotonic structures have been proposed to boost chiral light matter interactions metallic and dielectric chiral and achiral 2d and 3d but it is quite challenging to design systems for this purpose and they often suffer from drawbacks the first important thing to consider in the design of nanophotonic chirality enhancement is that different chiral applications depend on distinct electromagnetic quantities we can split these metrics into two sets the ones about circular dichroism and those describing spin excitation and optical torques in the case of circular dichroism the total absorption for left and right handed light is proportional to the electric energy density which is the norm of the electric field the difference in absorption for this polarization is proportional to lipkin's chirality which depends on both the electric and magnetic fields it is maximized when the electric and magnetic fields are 90 degrees out of phase and parallel to each other the circular dichroism signal is then the ratio of these quantities which is what we want to maximize using our nanophotonic structure but when it comes to spin excitation and optical torques what matters is the polarization ellipse of the electric field we can express this polarization in terms of the stokes parameters i which gives the total electric field intensity and v which gives the difference between left and right polarized intensities then the total spin excitation is proportional to i and the difference in up and down spin excitations proportional to v once again what we want to maximize is the ratio of these quantities known as the degree of circular polarization docp in the near field the polarization ellipse can have an arbitrary orientation in practical experiments on substrates and matter surfaces often we have to work with the projection of this polarization ellipse on the plane so we calculate the stokes parameters using the projected ellipse so here we have two sets of electromagnetic matrix the intensity matrix which give us the total response and the chirality matrix which tell us how strong the difference between the left and right polarizations are compared to the intensity matrix the goal of nanophotonic chiral enhancement is to boost these intensity matrix while making sure that the chirality matrix are not suppressed so in our work we looked at how far this was possible how much can we improve the matrix for all the chiroptical applications together in this talk i'll share our major results first that the chirality matrix for different applications are not only distinct but in fact incompatible in the near field then i will present how a fourier decomposition of the near field into evanescent orders gives us a lot of insight into chirality and based on this finally i will show an analytic limit for cd which is maximized in highly evanescent fourier orders nanophotonics is often used to enhance the near field but does this enhanced near field remain chiral let us look at one of the classical systems for nanophotonic enhancement using plasmonics this is an array of silver nanodisks which use disks because they are inherently achiral and do not add any chiral background to the signal from whatever film we place on it 
We illuminate the disk array from above and see what happens to the intensity and chirality matrix in the near field. The disk array has a plasmon resonance where the near field intensity peaks. Because it is an electric dipole resonance, the intensity maximum occurs near the edge of the nano disk. The electric field is mostly out of plane, so the in-plane Stokes parameter enhancement is lower than the electric energy density. But all in all, a good enhancement values. But the chirality matrix show a very different picture. Circular digroism vanishes everywhere in the unit cell. The degree of circular polarization is quite good, but changes sign. If our molecules or films extend over the unit cell, there will be cancellation of DOCP on spatial averaging. Thus, the silver disk is a poor system to enhance both metrics of chirality. So why does this happen? To understand this, we perform a Fourier decomposition of the near field. Only the central zero, zero order consisting of the incident and reflected or transmitted waves is propagating. Because the array is sub-wavelength, all higher orders are evanescent. We can now consider the contributions of each Fourier order to the average intensity matrix. If we look at the electric energy density, almost all of it comes from the few central Fourier orders. The lowest evanescent Fourier orders have the strongest contribution. Now, if we look at the chirality matrix of the Fourier orders, it tells us exactly what is wrong with the silver disk system. CD has vanished in all the Fourier orders, and the strong evanescent orders have the wrong circular polarization, which is what causes the spatial cancellation. So now that we know what the problem is, can we fix it? Turns out that the issue of wrong polarization of Fourier orders comes from the negative permittivity of silver and what Maxwell's boundary conditions do to the signs of the field components. So the solution is to move to positive permittivity dielectrics. Dielectric structures also allow more tunability due to the range of mere resonances. If we repeat the near field computation with an array of silicon nanodisks, we see how the problem is solved. The near field is strongest now at the center instead of the edge, and wherever the field is strong, DOCP is high and has the same sign. This gives us enhancement of spin excitation without loss of polarization. Unfortunately, that does not fix the issue of circular dichroism. And looking at the Fourier orders tells us why. Although all the evanescent orders have the same sign of DOCP, the CD in all the orders vanishes. But this does not mean that dielectrics can never help with CD enhancement. If we take the same system and work at a different wavelength, we have intensity enhancement with circular dichroism above one. But now, the DOCP is very poor. Again, the Fourier decomposition tells us why. There is strong CD in all evanescent orders, but the DOCP is quite low. So what is going on? We tried a lot to design a system which enhances both the CD and DOCP, but nothing worked. So finally, we gave up and tried to figure out what was going on analytically. And it turns out that when it comes to evanescent fields, CD and DOCP are completely incompatible. In an evanescent order, Lipkin's chirality is proportional to the real part of EX times EY conjugate, which means that it is maximized when EX and EY are in phase. But if the evanescent order is perfectly circularly polarized, these components will be 90 degrees out of phase, giving us zero Lipkin chirality. That is why if we consider different periodicities of the silicon nanodisc array and see what happens to the average DOCP and CD in the unit cell when we vary the wavelength, one thing becomes clear. Whenever DOCP is maximized, CD vanishes. And whenever CD is maximized, DOCP becomes very low. This is clearly different from propagating plane waves where Lipkin's chirality is proportional to the imaginary part of EX times EY conjugate. So both CD and DOCP go hand in hand. So what do we need to do to obtain maximum circular dichroism? We get the right kind of linear polarization in the evanescent orders. And there is an analytic limit on how high CD can get in a given Fourier order which increases with the wave vector of the order. We performed simulations on many geometries under different wavelengths of illumination. And if we put it all together, they fall nicely under the theoretical limit. And that tells us what we need to maximize CD near a metasurface. 
exalt high Fourier orders, make sure they have the correct linear polarization, and we can improve circular dichroism. And with that, we come to the end of my talk. The main things I would like you to take away are the incompatibility of the different metrics of chirality in the near field, the utility of Fourier decomposition in understanding and designing chiral near fields, the versatility of dielectric structures for chiroptical applications, and that CD enhancement can be maximized up to an analytic limit in highly evanescent Fourier orders. We hope that our work will guide the design of better metasurfaces for chiroptical applications. We have recently published our work in ACS Photonics. Please take a look at the paper for more details. I hope you liked the presentation and look forward to your questions. Thank you very much.